Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is the part 3 of pneumoconiosis series. In the part 1 we discussed about the general aspects of pneumoconiosis and about coal workers pneumoconiosis. In the part 2 we discussed about the silicosis and in this part we will discuss asbestos related lung diseases. We will study this under various headings. One, we will know what are the high risk occupation, the types of asbestos, the spectrum of the disease, the morphological features of each of these entities and finally a bit about clinical features and treatment. Now what is asbestos? Asbestos belongs to a family of pro-inflammatory crystalline hydrated silicates. These are naturally occurring fibrous minerals which are resistant to heat and corrosion. And because of this particular property that is being resistant to heat and corrosion, they are used in various insulation and fireproofing materials, automotive brakes and wall board materials. So all those people who are involved in manufacturing in these materials are at high risk for the development of asbestos related lung diseases. What are those occupations? They are milling, it could be metal fabrication. it could be it could be building insulation so in building insulation what what do they do they add you know these material for uh, comfort and energy efficiency it could be for the soundproofing it could be for thermal insulation and finally electrical insulation industries so what are the spectrum what is the spectrum of asbestos related lung diseases it produces four major categories of human disease one is pulmonary fibrosis and this is referred to as asbestosis the most the more common one the asbestosis the second one is pleural involvement which are benign asbestos related pleural responses these could be in the form of pleural plaques these could be in the form of pleural thickening and pleural effusion thirdly it can result in bronchogenic carcinoma and finally it can result in pleural malignancy that is mesothelioma so let's discuss these one by one The first one is pulmonary fibrosis. That's asbestosis. So asbestosis is a pulmonary parenchymal disease which is marked by diffuse pulmonary interstitial fibrosis. Now let's see what is the pathogenesis. The pathogenesis, you know, when we discussed about the general aspects, right? It all depends upon the concentration, the size, shape, and the solubility of the material. In this case, the asbestos. of different forms of asbestos so we need to know what are the different forms of asbestos two important forms of asbestos are serpentine form and amphibole forms the serpentine form is the one which is most commonly used in industries example being chrysotile okay so this is a serpentine form of asbestos which are more flexible and curved because of it being more flexible and curved they are likely to be impacted in upper respiratory passages and because of this it can be easily removed by the mucociliary apparatus in contrast to this serpentine forms amphibole forms are less commonly used the examples being amosite crocidolite anthophyllite and tremolite they are very stiff and short fibers and they are likely because of because of its stiffness and being short they are likely to be delivered deeper into the lung parenchyma they penetrate the epithelial cells and reach the interstitium okay so looking at this we should be aware that it is the amphibole forms which are more dangerous but fortunately they are less commonly used of course serpentine forms also result in asbestosis or asbestos related lung, lung diseases but then they are the ones which can be easily removed by mucociliary apparatus now let us understand the pathogenesis in detail so what happens whenever an individual inhales the asbestos fibers these asbestos fibers interact with the alveolar epithelial cells and the macrophages present in the alveoli they penetrate the alveoli and then they reach the interstitium and within the macrophage what do they do they actually activate the inflammasome okay and once the inflammasomes are activated they help in release of mediators and the various mediators released are the interleukin 1 the tumor necrosis factor fibronectin lipid mediators oxygen derived free radicals and most importantly the fibrogenic cytokines now what do they do these mediators you know they cause interstitial fibrosis because we know that the asbestos fibers particularly the the amphibole forms you know they penetrate the alveoli they penetrate the epithelial cells and then they reach the parenchyma and that results in 
interstitial fibrosis another important feature of asbestos fibers is that they also act as tumor initiator and tumor promoters and that is the mechanism or the cause for carcinogenesis in case of asbestos related lung diseases now what are all the pathological features of asbestosis it usually begins in the lower lobes and the subpleura okay so asbestosis that is pulmonary parenchymal disease begins in the lower lobes particularly the subpleural location in the early stages the fibrosis is minimal whereas in the later stages the fibrosis is very extensive it destroys the architecture of the lung parenchyma it forms cystically dilated spaces or characteristically the honeycombed appearance in later stages of asbestosis microscopically the characteristic feature is the presence of asbestos bodies now what are these asbestos bodies these are the asbestos fibers okay which are coated with a film of proteins rich in iron so protein coated fiber and this protein coat is also rich in iron okay now these are golden brown fusiform beaded rods the coating is thickest at the ends and that's why resulting in characteristic dumbbell shaped bodies these are asbestos bodies now how are they formed they are formed with the macrophages phagocytos asbestos and the iron derived from the phagocyte ferritin that is within the macrophage you have ferritin ferritin is a storage form of iron right and this ferritin you know releases iron and this iron goes and coats the asbestos fibers and that's how the asbestos bodies are formed now in contrast there is another body called ferruginous bodies what are these these are other inorganic particles or fibers which are coated with similar protein iron complex so if the fiber is asbestos it is asbestos bodies if the fiber is not asbestos and something else it is ferruginous body now how do you clinically diagnose asbestosis and what are the clinical features of asbestosis the earliest symptom of asbestosis because of its parenchymal disease interstitial lung disease you know it begins with insidious onset of breathlessness initially with exertion and later it can be at rest also sometimes you can find clubbing of digits in few cases cough wheezing sputum production is not common in asbestosis okay if it is present could be attributed to cigarette smoking you know the the the, the individual might also be smoker that's about asbestosis now move on moving on to the second important uh, disease that is benign asbestos related pleural response remember pleural response can be benign or malignant the benign ones we'll discuss now the benign ones are the pleural plaques the pleural thickening and the pleural effusion now what are pleural plaques pleural plaques are the most common manifestation of asbestos exposure okay they are well circumscribed plaques of dense collagen often they are calcified where are they found they are found in the anterior and the posterior lateral aspects of parietal pleura and even on the domes of the diaphragm okay and they can vary in size and shape the pleural plaques which are found in the anterior and the posterior lateral aspects of the parietal pleura remember it is a parietal pleural involvement it can also be seen on the domes of diaphragm the particularly the parietal pleura and see just presence of pleural plaques does not make the patient symptomatic okay if the patient also has parenchymal disease then they can manifest with pulmonary symptoms otherwise no symptoms sometimes you know um, the presence of pleural plaques may be associated with parenchymal disease and that's how symptoms might develop it and um, what is important is that the duration of exposure of asbestos to result in pleural plaques it's around 20 years okay Pe- people beyond exposure beyond 20 years of exposure they develop all the manifestations of asbestos related lung diseases so that's about pleural plaques now what is this pleural thickening how is it different from pleural plaque pleural thickening can be diffuse or focal a linear you know they are often associated with parenchymal disease okay so and in the pleural thickening you can find asbestos bodies when this is subjected to histopathological examination you can find asbestos bodies in the visceral pleura okay so the pleural thickening can involve both the parietal and the visceral pleural aspects it can cause symptoms unlike pleural plaques if they are found alone they do not cause symptoms pleural thickening will cause symptoms
Now, what is pleural effusion? Most of these pleural involvement, you know, because they irritate the pleura and then that irritation results in the formation of, you know, secretion of fluid by these pleural uh, mesothelial cells. And that's how collection of fluid takes place. That's pleural effusion. And because, and once the patient has pleural effusion, they present with chest tightness, pleuritic chest pain, sometimes fever and dyspnea, okay? That's about pleural effusion. So, we talked about three important things. One is pleural plaque, two, pleural thickening, and three, pleural effusions. This pleural effusion may persist for months to even years. Effusion can sometimes be hemorrhagic, okay? So, that is hemorrhagic pleural effusion. Now, that's about the second part. The third one, let us see the bronchogenic carcinoma. Remember, I told you asbestos fibers can also act as tumor initiator and tumor promoter, thereby resulting in malignancy. So, one of the important malignancy is involvement of the lung parenchyma itself, that is bronchogenic carcinoma. It was first recognized in the year 1930. Average latency period is around 20 to 30 years. Okay, association of lung cancer with smokers and asbestos is multiplicative. We know, I discussed about lung cancer in one of my earlier videos, right? Smoking is an important risk factor for the development of lung cancer. If the person is also exposed to asbestos and that sort of augments the tumorigenesis and, and result in cancer. So, the most important histological types of lung cancers in asbestos exposed individuals are adenocarcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. And the last one is the malignant pleural involvement that is mesothelioma. What is mesothelioma? 80% of the mesotheliomas occur in men exposed to asbestos. Okay, 80% of them. And smoking do not enhance. Now, if whether the patient is smoker or non-smoker, mesothelioma, mesothelioma is most commonly, most importantly attributed to asbestos exposure. Okay, how do how are they formed? How are they how do they look? They look like you know large masses. Sometimes these masses coils to form sheet-like configuration or even large pleural mass involving the entire pleura throughout the lung, you know, throughout the covering of the lung. So that's how mesothelioma can be so deadly, okay? And of course, any pleural uh, involvement uh, will result in pleural effusion. So 60% of the cases, pleural effusion is also an accompanied feature in the cases of mesothelioma. So that's about mesothelioma. So just summarizing the clinical features, similar to any other interstitial lung diseases, they rarely appear fewer than 10 years after first exposure. So that means you need to, I mean the patient should be really exposed for long duration, more than 20 years, most common after 20 to 30 years. Initial manifestation is dyspnea, okay, undue unpleasant awareness of one's own respiratory breathing is called dyspnea okay initially the dyspnea is on exertion and later this dyspnea can be even at rest the disease may remain static or they can progress to respiratory failure car pulmonary or even death now is there any treatment unfortunately there is no specific treatment only supportive therapy for all this and that's why we say prevention is better than cure it's always important to prevent the occurrence of asbestosis by using various you know protective measures of late the incidence of asbestos related has actually come down because of uh, proper protective measures taken up by the workers in these industries so that's about asbestos related lung disease we talked about occupation we talked about the types of asbestos remember amphibole and serpentine forms the amphibole forms are more uh, dangerous as compared to serpentine forms and then we discussed about the spectrum of diseases involving the lung and the pleura in the lung we talked about asbestosis and bronchogenic carcinoma in pleura we talked about pleural plaques pleural thickening pleural effusion and the malignant one mesothelioma so thank you for watching if you have liked this video please hit the like button do comment if you have any queries don't forget to subscribe and do share if you find this video useful thank you